My postpartum wife broke my handmade glass sculpture a year ago. Ada for still holding lingering feelings about it? My wife and I have been married for three years, and we had our first baby last year. My wife did go through a lot of hormonal emotions postpartum and she had a lot of mood swings. A couple of months postpartum, she broke my handmade glass sculpture, which I had spent a couple of months working on as a birthday gift for my sister. My wife called my name many times as she needed help, but I was working on the engravings for the sculpture and I was really concentrated on it. I was going to go to my wife in just a few minutes, but my wife got very frustrated, and she just barged into my room and threw the sculpture on the ground and it broke. I was shocked, and my wife immediately apologized a lot, but I didn't want to stress her out too much so I told her it was alright, and that I should have responded when she called my name. The next week, we went to the doctor and my wife got prescribed meds for PPD. My wife's mood instantly shifted a lot after she started taking those meds. My wife did apologize constantly and felt very guilty about breaking the glass sculpture, and she even cried a few times, but I told her it was alright and to let it go. It's been a year now, and while we are back to normal, I still hold a lot of lingering feelings. I feel like a part of my love for my wife was gone when she broke the sculpture, and I could not imagine anyone, let alone my wife, doing such a terrible thing. Ita. Update, September 21st, 2024. My wife and I have been married for three years, and we had our first baby last year. My wife did go through a lot of hormonal emotions postpartum and she had a lot of mood swings. A couple of months postpartum, she broke my handmade glass sculpture, which I had spent a couple of months working on as a birthday gift for my sister. My wife called my name many times as she needed help, but I was working on the engravings for the sculpture and I was really concentrated on it. I was going to go to my wife in just a few minutes, but my wife got very frustrated, and she just barged into my room and threw the sculpture on the ground and it broke. I was shocked, and my wife immediately apologized a lot, but I didn't want to stress her out too much so I told her it was alright, and that I should have responded when she called my name. The next week, we went to the doctor and my wife got prescribed meds for PPD. My wife's mood instantly shifted a lot after she started taking those meds. My wife did apologize constantly and felt very guilty about breaking the glass sculpture, and she even cried a few times, but I told her it was alright and to let it go. It's been a year now, and while we are back to normal, I still hold a lot of lingering feelings. I feel like a part of my love for my wife was gone when she broke the sculpture, and I could not imagine anyone, let alone my wife, doing such a terrible thing. Ada. Ada has no consensus bot, OOP received mixed responses. Comments. Commenter 1, talk it out, now. Lingering feelings rots a relationship. Commenter 2, TBH, I would hold a lot of lingering feelings for a partner who refused to help me when I needed help and was postpartum with a newborn. I absolutely don't condone breaking things, but I do know that rage is part of depression and not having enough support definitely contributes to worsening PPD. Info, was this the only time she had to ask multiple times for help? Commenter 3, Nta, for having hurt feelings, but I feel like you and your wife have different perspectives of what actually happened. You see a crazy woman who smashed your sculpture, and she saw a man who wouldn't answer her cries for help who rather tend to a piece of glass than his wife or baby. Go see a therapist with your wife instead of Reddit. Update, September 22nd, 2024. I read some of the comments and got some good suggestions. I realized I had to be honest and upfront with my wife. My wife and I just had a long talk, where I finally told her about everything I was bottling up over the past year. I told my wife I didn't blame her since she had PPD, but it was just hard not to feel resentful. I told her I understood why she was frustrated at that moment, and that I should have immediately responded when she called me, but I told her I would have preferred if she shouted at me or even slapped me or something rather than breaking that sculpture. That was just heartless and cruel. My wife seemed very remorseful and apologized a lot again and cried. She asked if there was anything she could do to undo what she had done last year, and if there was any way I could not have that lingering feelings since it really hurt her a lot. I had thought about this for the past couple of hours, and I realized there was only one way where I could completely let go of that lingering feelings. And I told my wife that. I told my wife I would be sewing a handmade memory quilt for my sister's birthday next year. This would take almost a year, and I told my wife once I do finish and give my sister the gift, that's when all my lingering feelings would probably go away. My wife seemed grateful and asked if she could help. I told her not for this gift, but maybe in the future. The truth is I don't really feel super comfortable trusting my wife with this, given how she destroyed my previous gift. It's psychological, and I'll most likely regain the trust once I finish sewing the quilt. I haven't told my wife about the trust issue, as I think it's just a me issue, not my wife's issue. Relevant comments. OOP taking too much time away from his wife and child to make this gift. OOP. No it doesn't take much time. 
I only work on it that day if I'm free, and it's usually only 20 to 30 minutes, it never goes over an hour. And it isn't about punishing my wife, I just want to reciprocate because over the past couple of years, my sister has given me really detailed handcrafted gifts. I usually never do handcrafted gifts, but it isn't right to just buy a gift off of Amazon for my sister's birthday after she spent months into making my gift. Commenter 1, OP holds on to lingering feelings for a year and finally talks to his wife about it. Now he's keeping secret that he doesn't trust her either. Oh, and he's working on a year-long quilt while his child will be a toddler, and his wife will still need help. This can only end well. Story 2, Original Post September 11, 2024 I've got a pretty large property and don't mind the neighbor's cat hanging out chasing mice and other things, but it's constantly walking right up to me and brining me dead things when I'm outside. I don't feed the cat and barely pay any attention to it except when it rubs up against me and purrs. I'll give it a quick pat and move on to whatever I was doing, gardening, etc. Otherwise I basically ignore it. Anyways, the frequency of dead things plopped at my feet has gotten to almost every day. I don't want to be mean and scare it or anything, it's welcome to relax or prowl the yard but it's a long walk from one end of the yard to my trash cans to dispose of the things it brings and it's getting old really fast. Update 1st September 12th, 2024. In a nutshell, the neighbor's cat keeps bringing me dead things almost daily. I don't hate cats, but cats are just not my jam, sorry sub, no offense. If cats are around cool, no big deal. I'm an animal lover. I have no issues with the cat itself. It's welcomed in my yard to do as it pleases and I practically ignore it unless it goes out of its way to come up to me. I'll give it a quick pat or scritch and move on to the many things I have to do in my yard. I forgot to mention the actual issue is not that it brings me dead things, but the dead things it has brought me and I didn't find right away, attract ants. Where I'm at, ants can pop up out of nowhere in the hundreds or more if dead things are not disposed of quickly. This summer I've been at war with ants and they are such a pain to deal with especially if they're swarming the dead things left by the cat, then lugging the dead thing. Way. Over to the trash cans is also a huge pain. I've been working hard to get the yard landscaped the way I want it. I've planted specific flowers to attract birds, butterflies, small wildlife. It's gotten close to looking like a little sanctuary. It requires a ton of maintenance as I clean daily any seeds not eaten in the feeders, mowing, trimming, etc. The cat walking around in the yard is no issue for me as it seems not to bother any of the small wildlife except for mice and seems to enjoy the yard versus its owner's yard for some reason. It's an older cat and I don't think it's right to spray it with a water bottle or try to scare it or be mean to it as some suggested here. That's just not an option for me. I called my vet to get their advice and he said to soak cotton balls 1 colon 1 with food grade vinegar and water and lightly dab my wrists, neck, ankles, shoes, etc. The vet said the vinegar is totally safe for the cat but cats don't like the vinegar and will associate the scent with me and in theory should stop approaching me and will likely give up trying to give me dead things. The vet said it might be a good idea to actually lure the cat to me with a simple treat to make sure it approaches me, smell me, dislike it and leave. So one quick stop at the market for the vinegar, cotton balls, cat treats and dabbing myself all over like my vet advised and I'm good to go. Voila. Problem solved right? Nope. My beloved dog wouldn't even come up to me the entire rest of the day. My wife said I stunk and demanded I shower. I told her I still had a lot of chores outside in the yard and she said I can't step into the house until I showered. I told her I would shower after my chores. The cat showed up as usual and brought me another dead thing, partial grasshopper this time, and I did what the vet said and gave it the cat treat. It not only approached me and didn't flinch at all at my smell, but went crazy purring and rubbing up against me after I gave it the treat. Like purring so hard I could feel the reverberations when it rubbed against my pant leg. Unusually, the damn cat followed me around most of the day and kept interfering with what I was doing, pruning, sweeping, etc. Running in front of me while I'm carrying things to the wheelbarrow, zipping between my legs, laying down right where I'm about to trim. I'd gently move him and the little bastard kept coming back. I'd make sure I'd hold out my wrists for it to smell and that did jack shit. Cat didn't even care or seem to notice the vinegar smell. I did a lot of work in the yard but still had more to do so I was going to go take a quick nap on the couch and then get back to the yard but my wife wouldn't have any of it and kicked me out. She told me to go nap near the pool in the nice shaded area I had set up with lawn furniture and a hammock. Didn't want to argue with the boss so I went to the hammock. Took a nice nap only to wake up to find the really cat sleeping on my chest purring, ass right in my face. I gently let it down on the ground so I could get back to my yard work and right there under the hammock another dead thing the cat left for me. Covered in hundreds of ants. FML. I give up. 
Update 2nd September 22, 2024. First of all I'd like to thank everyone who gave sincere well-meaning advice here as when I say I'm not a cat person, I really mean I'm not a cat person. I don't dislike cats, but I've always grown up with dogs and other than bumping into the occasional cat in the periphery, I have almost no knowledge other than the basic guy off the street. There seem to be some conflicting advice in the thread, ignore the cat, pick up the cat constantly, feed that cat, don't feed the cat, instead of vinegar try citrus, no try peppermint instead of citrus, eat in front of the cat, etc. To answer a couple of questions from the thread. Maybe the cat belonged to the previous owner of the house and has hung around. Nope. I've owned the property for over 20 years. I had the former dilapidated house demolished and over the decades slowly added the main house, two small guest houses, the pool house, etc. The cat literally showed up on the day the new neighbor below the hill moved with their stuff. I simply connected the dots. Are there any poisonous plants in my landscaped yard? To my knowledge I know. I have a dog who I would take a bullet for and when I hired the landscape architect and arborist, I made sure to request nothing would be planted that would harm my dog or any of the local wildlife but at the same time I wanted to attract butterflies, hummingbirds, etc. For this same reason, despite it being a really easy solution to my ginormous ant problem, I refuse to use chemicals slash pesticides in the yard. Trial and error, advice from the thread that worked or didn't work. Citrus and peppermint. First of all I wasn't going to make the same mistake again of putting on a scent that would upset my dog. The day I tried the vinegar my dog tried to avoid me all day and would only begrudgingly come to me when I insisted and called him over. The only citrus I had around was some strong citrus soap smell from one of my wife's fancy soaps she has all over the house. Tried it around the cat, nothing. Didn't deter the cat at all. I didn't try peppermint because I don't like the smell of peppermint myself. Ignore the cat completely, impossible. The damn cat refuses to be ignored. The more I ignored it the more it would walk in my path, lay down exactly where I'm working in the yard, follow me constantly. Eat in front of the cat but under no circumstance do I feed the cat, didn't work. The cat would just stare at me and bob its head back and forth intently watching whatever I was eating then bob its eyes to my mouth and just watch me chew. Still brought me dead things. I was strong, held my ground. I didn't feed the cat even though I'm pretty sure it was asking for a bite of whatever I was eating at the time. Love bomb the cat, constantly pick it up. Go over the top to pay attention to it. To the people who gave this piece of advice, if you were trying to help, then thank you. If you were trolling, then congratulations, you got me good. Not only did smothering the cat with affection and constantly picking it up not work, it backfired. Hard. The cat became obnoxiously clingy and would demand I pick it up and give scritches, constantly interrupting what I'm doing. Sometimes it won't stop meowing incessantly until I do a quick pick up and scritch. Put it back down only to have it do the same thing less than an hour later. Man, I'm busy, I don't have time for this. So, up to this point basically nothing worked. After trying some of the thread's advice? Significantly worse. Cat still came around every day. Every day still brought me dead things. Followed me everywhere, but now every now and then I gotta pick it up to rub its tummy slash give it a scritch to hit the reset button so it would stop meowing at me. It incessantly follows me. There was only one single day where I didn't see the cat, or so I thought. I left really early in the morning to go pick up things I needed from Home Depot, drop by my local nursery to pick up their good at secret sauce a compost, basically run a bunch of errands. Came back in the afternoon and went about my chores in the yard and as the hours passed it hit me. No cat. Not a peep, nothing trying to trip me as I carry things with the wheelbarrow. No demands for a pickup scritch and release. Nothing. I just shrugged my shoulders at my good fortune of finally working in peace. It was getting late and I was hungry and since I told my wife I was running errands, I guess she assumed I would pick up something to eat out and she didn't pack anything for me. Headed back to the house and as I was opening the kitchen sliding door, there sleeping in my wife's lap as she's petting it and watching TV is the goddamn cat. Oh hell lel neeawa. My wife looked up and smiled at me then quickly frowned and asked, what's wrong? I said, what do you mean? She said, when you came in your jaw dropped and you mouthed, son of a bitch. Me, why would you let that cat in the house? Wife, why wouldn't I? Poor thing was outside rubbing up the the glass door and meowing bloody murder. It was obviously hungry and thirsty. Me, oh my god. You didn't feed the cat did you? Wife, of course I did. You think I'm going to let a helpless animal go hungry or be thirsty at my door? I thought I was going to have an aneurysm. All I could think about was the movie Gremlins when you were firmly warned never to feed the thing past midnight or else you're fucked. Now my wife's done it. She's fed the damn cat. I'm fucked. Me, this is the little bastard that has been giving me headaches with the ants for weeks by bringing me dead things. Wife, what are you talking about? It just showed up today. Me, holy. Shit. 
I just realized all this time, I don't think I actually ever directly mentioned the cat to my wife. I have a few acres of land and the land is nicely landscaped and partitioned with very tall trees as to break up the line of sight, as the landscape architect said. To give a sense of walking in a manicured forest and not knowing what is around the corners until you turn and see the different kinds of landscapes on the property. I've been working on the far end of the property and that's where the cat shows up. She never saw the cat until today. Me, wait a minute. That day I came in with the vinegar smell and you wouldn't let me in the house. That's because I was trying make the cat keep away from me. Exactly at this point the cat woke up and saw me, hopped off my wife's lap and started purring loud like a motorboat and rubbing hard against my legs. Wife, that's why. Oh my god. Why didn't you ask Kevin for advice before trying something that stupid? Kevin is our vet. I've known him, his wife and kids for years. He comes over every now and then and we play video games in my man cave or to shoot pool while the wives are doing who knows what. Me, it was Kevin who told me to do the vinegar. My wife literally rolled her eyes. Wife, I can't believe you two are doctors. I'm a retired anesthesiologist. That was some dumb advice. Me, I know. It didn't work at all. So I went to, to an internet forum and asked for advice. My wife literally laughed in my face. Wife, you asked complete strangers on the internet for advice? And how did that work out for you? Me, not so good. Anyways I'm going to take care of this right now and take the cat back to its owners. It belongs to the new family who moved in down the hill. I gently grabbed the little bastard who was all happy and smug, hopped in the truck and rang the neighbor's doorbell. The day after they moved in my wife and I introduced ourselves and gave them a small gift card to Home Depot and some of my wife's really good homemade brownies. Other than that, I haven't talked to them. The wife answered the door and the husband was sitting at their table in the back and waved to me. I reintroduced myself while holding their cat and told them I'm brining it back as it's been coming over to my yard every day. I was about to follow another thread suggestion and ask them if they could please consider putting a bell and collar on their cat so it would have a hard time catching things and bringing their corpses to me when the wife said, that's not our cat. We don't have a cat. All the air left my lungs. If I thought I was going to have an aneurysm before, now I'm sure I'm going to have a stroke as well. No. Really. Way. This. Isn't. Their. Cat. A million things was going through my head and number one on that list is I call bullshit. There is no really way. I live on a small cul-de-sac. I am the only house on top of the hill because I own the. This cat literally showed up on the day they were moved their stuff in. I was thinking are these guys really evil douchebags who dumped their cat and trying to deny it? The words just plopped out of my mouth and I instantly felt like an idiot. Are you sure? Wife looked a little taken aback and said, that's not our cat. She sounded sincere and her face looked convincing. The husband came to the door and said, is there something wrong? I said, I thought this was your cat and was brining it back to you. It showed up the day you guys moved in. The husband said, that's not our cat. I've seen it walking around but I think it belongs to one of the neighbors. He also looked sincere. Are they just world class bullshitters? There's no way this isn't their cat. What are the odds? Their little kid who looked like she was maybe 4 years old or so came to the door and smiled at me and the cat. Okay, here we go. Kids don't bullshit. They are brutally really honest and if this is their cat, this kid is going to spill it right there and then. Nope. The kid's all like, a kitty. This kid had no idea of this cat. This cat isn't theirs. I could only think, oh my god. Fuck, 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 fuck. I sheepishly apologized for the error and left with the little bastard. It was before 5 so I called Kevin, the vet, and told him I'm bringing the cat over to see if it has a chip. I dropped by his clinic. They scanned the cat. No chip. Kevin examined the cat and estimated it is around 7 or 8 years old. Said there is no way this is a feral street cat as this cat is broken and way too used to being around people. What do you mean broken? Is something wrong? Kevin said, I know nothing like that. I mean this. He took the cat from me and cradled it on its back. It just stared at him calmly. He put it on the table on its back and gently grabbed both hind legs and pumped them up and down and went chugga 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 choo choo. The cat just looked back and blinked at him. See? Broken. I had no idea WTF he's talking about. Cats are wary of complete strangers. Even house cats that have been around people all their lives. Cats don't just let anyone walk up to them, pick them up. And they will never let a stranger just put them on their back exposing their vulnerable abdomen and let them reposition them like a G.I. Joe action figure with the kung fu grip like this one does. So what? So it's really just super friendly. Kevin, you're not getting it. I've never seen a cat as chill as this cat. No one has. They don't make cats like this. This cat literally gives zero fucks. Even to its own peril. Even the techs noticed it. They were just passing this cat around, putting it in all positions, holding it, petting it. 
This cat didn't give a fuck. This goes way beyond being just friendly. It's broken man, but in a good way. Maybe it's just developmentally disabled? Kevin, nope. Not that I can tell. In fact, I think it's probably above average intelligence. What makes you say that? Kevin, it somehow wiggled its way into your life and got your dumbass here didn't it? But I don't like cats. Kevin, I know. It's played the long con on you. He was smiling his ass off like it was Christmas. Like I said, smart. But I don't want a cat. Don't you know anyone who will take it? Kevin, absolutely. The tech already offered. She's in love with it. And the other tech wants it too. But here's the thing. What? Kevin took the cat and plopped it in my arms. It looked up at me with those big dumb eyes and started purring really loud. He took the cat back. Purring stop. Cat just looked at him. He put the cat back in my arms. It started purring again. Kevin, see? This cat has a major hard on for you. I'm not going to tell you what to do but my two cents it would be cruel to separate this cat from you. Look, if you really don't want the cat I can have literally a bazillion ladies in two seconds here busting down this door for this cat. At least you told me you didn't feed it. Um. I told him my wife already did and she really liked the cat. Kevin, oh man, you're really. So. I bring the cat back home. I told my wife everything. My wife has a grin ear to ear. Wife, okay, good. She grabbed the cat and it just snuggled up to her. The little kiss ass. There's still time to go to PetSmart and get it some things. And while we're there you can get one of those cat flappy doors for the kitchen. I told her hell no. This cat has already given me major headaches with ants outside. I don't want it coming in the house. I looked her straight in the eyes and said, 100% and no to the cat door. I crossed my arms, 1000% and no. She narrowed her eyes at me. Anyways, we're at PetSmart and she's looking for outfits for the cat and I'm in the pet door section. The only consolation prize is she let me name the cat. I named it what she thought was, Elby. I told her it sounds cute like Elmo and she went with it. It's actually is L, B, for little bastard. I giggle inside when I call its name. P.S. L.B. has stopped bringing me dead things since being inside most of the time. Has already destroyed my Newton's cradle I've had for years in my office. Stolen one of my Chewbacca slippers which I still haven't found and I still often wake up after napping with him sleeping on my chest, ass right in my face. F.M.L. I give up.